All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how I made 300 wheel horsepower in my 2018 WRX. So I released this mod overview video about a year and a half ago, and while I listed out every single modification I've done to the car during that point in time, I realized that I never went in depth of how I achieved to get 303 wheel horsepower. So I wanted to do that in today's video, and so I'm just gonna list out every single performance mod that I could think of, and hopefully I don't miss anything. So if you guys spot anything that I don't mention, let me know in the comments below. All right, so let's just dive right in. To start things off, again, my car is running 303 wheel horsepower with 327 foot-pounds of torque on 21 PSI, conservatively tuned by Surge Line here in Oregon. And it's conservative since my goal was to have reliable power to maximize the time that I have with this car. You know, I didn't want to blow anything up during a pull or anything like that. And of course, this was in 2019, so this was way before the EPA introduced all these restrictions. Just keep that in mind. And I know 300 wheel horsepower is not the fastest out there, but it's definitely enough to have some fun especially for a daily driver. After three years at this power level, uh, it still puts a smile to my face every time I drive it to work. That's one of the reasons why I like driving it to work is so I can really just get to drive it. So I wanted to note that this is my second pro tune. My first tune was with Surge Line as well. Um, at that time it was pushing 282 wheel horsepower and 318 foot pounds of torque. The only difference in my second pro tune is the Cobb Big SF intake that I have right here. I added this later on and I should have done it all at once, but you know how it goes. So I had to get that second pro tune and this thing gave me an additional 21 wheel horsepower and an additional nine foot pounds of torque. So I know a lot of folks say intakes are just noisemakers and they're most likely right. But as you guys can see, I was able to squeeze out a little more power on this platform just by installing that thing. And like I said, I've been pretty happy with the power and it still surprises me how quickly it gets up there uh, till this day. So it's going on a little over three years with this tune. And uh, yeah, it's just, I'm still, I'm still happy with it. And I also wanna mention that this is on pump gas. Definitely would have been more with flex fuel, but I'm only on 92 since flex is a bit scarce here in Portland. So I wanted to make it easy, you know, going on road trips and stuff like that, just to have regular pump gas through the system. So I'm gonna start with the exhaust system and then work our way up to the engine, all the good stuff. This car is running the Perrin resonated catback. I think, I honestly think I'm one of the few left running a Perrin catback right there. Since it was one of the first catbacks available for the FA20, I don't know, back in early 2015. Uh, if you're interested in sound clips, I'll link a video on it. It's a lot quieter than most out there, but I like it since there's no drone in the cabin when you're going you know, on road trips and highways and stuff like that. And I paired that parent cat back with a Grim Speed Cat J pipe, not the new one, uh, the version one, the older one. And like I said, it's quieter than most setups out there and there's virtually no drone. If you're interested in that, like I said, I'll link a video in the description below. Anything I talk about, I'll try to link it so you guys can check it out. And also this is still on the stock headers and stock turbo, so I can't really say full bolt-on since it's actually not. Also, it's on the stock clutch too, and I'm almost at 33,000 miles on the stock clutch and there's no issues. It still grabs and it still pulls. And just right off the bat in the engine bay, first up is this Perrin charge pipe. This was one of the first performance related bonds that I bought for the car. And honestly, I'm not sure if this contributed a lot to reach 300 horsepower, but I figure anything was better than the stock one. It's less restrictive and it just looks cooler. And right next to the charge pipe, as mentioned, is this Cobb Big SF intake, which was responsible for adding 21 wheel horsepower and nine foot pounds of torque. I do have the Grim Speed Stealth Box laying right there, but I ran out of time and I couldn't get it scheduled date for a retune with my tuner. So I'm just gonna have it sit there for a little while until I decide what to do with it. And then as far as cooling goes, right up here is the Process West Kona Cooler, not the Verta Cooler. This one is the one just before that. And what I like about this one right here is that it still maintains the stock position. And it's cheaper and gets the job done, honestly. Uh, definitely an improvement over the stock intercooler. The only gripe that I have about it is every time I have to remove that coupler right right there 
that's the most painful thing to install and I swear I spend an hour on it making sure all the couplers and clamps are there so I guess that's one of the benefits of the verticooler is you don't have that potential issue right there because I've had leaks coming from that as well but yeah no complaints on this guy it uh, does the job and I do want to apologize for the dirt been driving it to work every day and it's you know you know it goes it gets dirty and I just didn't get a chance to clean it before the video <laughs> And I'd like to mention, just because I'm really proud of it, I actually installed everything you see here, so I saved a lot of money by doing that. And so while I was working on the car, I decided to delete the TGV and the EGRs. I didn't just unplug, I actually took it out and then installed the parent ones. And that also contributed a little bit to the power and it helps keep the intake valves clean. So as you may know, with the Cobb Green Speed update, you can no longer get retuned if you have your TGVs and EGRs deleted or a catless J pipe so if you're planning on getting a retune take care of those first before doing so and then you should be fine it's not that big of a deal but it's more of a burden than anything and then down there you guys can't see it from here but there is a grim speed boost controller to help the tuner really fine tune the boost and i've since installed the grim speed cast aluminum turbo inlet and the nameless performance bypass valve they didn't really provide any power gains and no retune required but they sure made the whoosh sounds a lot louder and i'm not complaining and i know i could have dumped a lot more money on the performance parts but i also wanted to have the supporting mods because what's having power if your car can't handle it so there's a variety of parts that you guys aren't able to see it's buried all in there and i made sure to get as many supporting mods as i can and off the top of my head just the one i could think of is just under the intercooler you guys can't see it from here but it's the parent pitch stop brace and the pitch stop mount. So if you didn't know, the 15s and 17 WRXs and STIs are notorious for breaking that pitch stop brace uh, right next to the firewall. I did this on my 2018 just to be extra sure. I wasn't sure if it was required since they updated that pitch stop area. But like I said, I just wanted to be sure and just get that over with just to have no worries. And I don't know if this is considered a supporting mod, but this uh, this car actually looks like it's stock height, but it is sitting on some Bilstein shocks with some RCE yellow springs intended for the STI. It's only 0.8 inches lower than stock, and I purposely wanted it that way just so I don't have any issues with potholes or anything like that. And then in the back, I have the Super Pro lower control arms. Again, I don't know if you guys can see it much. Somewhere in there, it's just really hard to see. But yeah, Super Pro lower control arms just to help with the camber and everything like that. I do eventually want to get some coilovers just because these are a little too stiff for daily driving, but I'll save that for a separate video. But for now, it looks good and I like the way it's sitting and it's not too low and it's just gives it that slight drop right there. This also has the group end mount and white line positive shift bushings to reduce that transmission movement when you're accelerating or when you're braking hard. So it really does make the car shift more accurately and it's, it's rougher, but in a good way. As far as tires go to keep all that power down and grip, I have Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's wrapped around the method wheels. And I can't stress this enough, but in my opinion, these are the best tires for daily driving and for a little spirited driving as well. They grip in the rain and in the summer, you cannot get these to, to budge. They're just planted. And these tires are so good that I had to buy a spare setup right here so that I can swap them out when they're toast. And uh, yeah, I'm just, overall, I'm just pretty happy with them. And yes, this is still on the stock brakes and rotors, but I do have some slotted ones somewhere here. I don't really exactly know where I put them, but they're somewhere there. I have them ready to go when these get old. Bought them a little while ago, but I wanted to get more miles on the stock brakes and rotors before swapping them out. I just felt like it was a waste. I will do that at some point in the future. And guys, literally that is it. All those performance parts I just mentioned got the car over the 300 mark. And not gonna lie, I was a little disappointed during my first Pro Tune because I was hoping for 300 just so I can sleep at night. But you know, like I mentioned, it was 280 something horsepower, just a little shy of 300. I'm sure you wouldn't even notice a difference, but for me, it's a, it's a mental thing. 
I wanted to get to 300 just so I can say that I have 300. But I guarantee you the butt dyno wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So like I mentioned, it was very easy to make power on this platform. And I know there's a lot more bandwidth in there, but I didn't want to sacrifice the reliability of it. But my point is that with a good tuner, you'll be able to achieve your power goals. And they'll listen to you when you say you want a modest tune that won't break the motor. But at the end of the day, if your motor is potentially going to blow, it's most likely going to blow. So just make sure you keep up with maintenance, oil changes and all that stuff. Just all the basic stuff, not just with WRXs, but basic stuff with cars in general. So guys, that's going to be it for this one. Just a short video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked the video, then give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And also, I wanted to thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. It's growing on a steady basis, and I can't do any of this without your support. So thank you. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. But before I do, remember to always stay true to yourself. And more importantly, stay true to your build. I actually really, really like that. I'm going to coin that phrase. <laughs> All right, see you guys in the next one.